What's up, everybody? It's Josh here. It's been a couple weeks since my last tutorial. I've been on vacation with my family, but I'm back at it now, and I've got a fun, quick little tutorial for you here to kick us off. In this one, I'm going to show you how to add icons to your Divi blog posts by category. So this is the look we're going to create to where you can see we're just using the Divi blog module to pull open the recent three blog posts. And these don't have featured images, so they would otherwise look fairly boring with just a title, the metadata, and text here. But what we've done is we've spiced this up a little bit to where any post that has the category of video will show this little play icon. And any post that has the category PDF will show this little PDF document icon. So that's the look we're going to create. Without further ado, let's dive in and have some fun. All right, so first things first, I have us started off right now with, again, just the basic Divi blog module that's pulling in three blog posts. Again, like I just mentioned, these, you know, normally the Divi blog without featured images looks very bare and can look really boring. And before we dive in and before I show you how to add these icons and how we're going to go about this, I want to explain kind of how this came about because I think it's really important. It's going to be really handy for you. Recently, we had a project where one of our clients has a whole membership site, uh, membership portion to their website. And they have all these posts. None of them have featured images. They're just posts. So it looked very, very boring, particularly since they're in like a construction space. It just looked really boring. So they asked if there was a way to kind of add some animated icons to their posts. And they had the same layout that I just showed you. They have either videos or PDF or text documents. So what they did initially was they went into the posts and I just brought open a post here. They went in and they right clicked in the title field and they added an emoji. We thought that would work out fine because they added just a text document for the PDF categories and then a video camera for any post that was labeled video. However, what we found out was after a day or so, all those emojis started deleting and they would just disappear and then a question mark would show up in all of these titles. And that's because with WordPress posts, the title field is what's called a rich text field. So usually HTML and special characters like that are not going to hold. So that was the issue. And then the client was like, well, crap, is there any way we can have icons? So it just makes this look a little more appealing. So we said, yep, I'm sure we can figure it out. And we did just that. And we came up with this look to where again, anything, any post video with a video category is going to have this. Any post with a PDF category is going to have this. Now, before I show you how to do this, just a couple of things I want to make note of. We are going to be using a little bit of CSS to pull this off, which is why it's super important to make sure you are familiar and have a good understanding of CSS. So I do have a whole Divi CSS course. Check out the promo code below for a discount to get involved with that. And we're also going to be pulling icons from this elegant theme font list. So these are free icons that we can use. Really, really handy. I've done this before in a few tutorials. This is what we're gonna to refer to to pull those icons. So let's go ahead and get started here. So again, I have created the video and the PDF categories to start. So if we go to a post, you'll see that this post has a video category selected. And the cool thing about this is you can do as many categories as you want and you can do as many icons as you want. So if you have six different categories, you could potentially do a different icon for six different categories, which is really cool. So where we're gonna start is we're gonna get into just a little bit of CSS. So what we're gonna do is generally, you're gonna to wanna to put CSS in your child theme style sheet. In this case, we don't have to write too much here. So I'm actually just gonna go into my Divi theme customizer and let's drop below all the CSS that I've written in previous tutorials here. Let's clean that up a little bit. So. Uh, first things first, I want to get rid of this border just because if you put in a, an icon here, it can conflict with the border a little bit. So I know right offhand, I just want to get rid of that. So I'm going to use inspect element and I've got a tutorial on that. If you're not familiar with that, we're going to find where that little border is and we can find it right there in that code. There's a border of one pixel. Let's drop that down to zero. So yep, that looks good. Let's just take all that and let's paste that in there and we can delete anything that we don't need. So you can see this had a class of blog grid, blog post, and that border. So we took that down to zero. We're off to a good start. Now, I wanna add in the icon, and here is the big thing. Here's the big kicker. What we found out with doing this method for our client was we found out that if you write a class of category dash whatever you put in here, whatever the category is, 
you can control it with, with CSS. So for example, this one was video. If we put category dash video, we can now control that class, that post that has that class. It's super, super cool. So for example, uh, what are these post titles? I think these are, I believe these are H2s if I recall. Yeah, so it's an H2 title. So if I were to do the H2 under anything video, I could do color green and all H2s, you'll see that? All of the H2s under the post category video now turn green. So very, very powerful. We kind of stumbled onto that. I got to give credit to my lead web designer, Jonathan, for figuring that out because there was a few different methods we tried and that ended up working. So that's not the tutorial though. We want to see how to do these icons. So what we're going to do is we're going to add icons with what's called a pseudo class, which again, I cover this in much more detail in my CSS course, but we are going to, we've got our category of video. We are going to add a before element. So essentially we wanna put this icon before this post. Now you could do it on the H2, you could do the title technically, which is a valid way to go as well. Uh, so you could do you know H2 before, so this icon is just gonna be on the title. But I wanna have some flexibility with this. I wanna be able to really control the size and have some fun, so that's what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna bring in some code here and I am gonna walk you through what we're gonna do because the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what the icon needs to be. So I'm going to paste our font family. The font family is saying it's ET modules, which is this right here. This Elegant Themes provides all these little icons and modules for free for us. So this is saying, hey, this before element for any class that has video is gonna be pulling from the modules, and then we actually need to give it some content. So. I've covered this in a couple tutorials previously and more in my CSS course, but essentially if you do content and then if you pull the number for any one of these icons, it can display just like that. You don't have to add any plugin, don't have to do anything additional. All you have to do is say, hey, it's gonna be the font family of ET modules and then the content is gonna be this icon. Now, as I mentioned previously, you'll see that if you copy the entire number, it's not quite gonna work. Uh, my understanding is with these, generally you have to do a backslash E and then whatever that number is, that's what icon is gonna show. So if we find O4E, let's find O4E here. There are a lot of icons right here. You can see right here, basically these first three symbols are being um, covered up by that slash. So you just need to put this. So you, we've got E, O4E right there in our code, which is bringing in that play module. So a little confusing, but super cool. You'll get more used to that as you move on. The other thing I wanna do is adjust the font size. So it's a little small right now, right? Let's do maybe 24. That looks pretty good. And then let's give it a color. And we wanna match that green I have up there. So let's just use our color picker and let's match that green. So yeah, that looks cool. And you saw the code just change there just because we we're using the color picker, but that's a that's not gonna change the actual live site. So there we go, let's make sure that's coded right. So there we go, we're looking good already. Let's go ahead and save this and refresh because wow, this is looking pretty good. You can see that right now, that icon is bumping down the title and the metadata and the other text. So let's go ahead and check that out. So again, that's a valid way to go, but if you want that to be beside the title, we need to adjust the positioning. So again, I cover this in a lot more detail. This is super, super important to understand. In my CSS course, we go into this because positioning is all about that. It's gonna tell it where to go. So we're gonna say, hey, the before element for this category here is a position of what's called absolute. And what that's gonna do is give us more freedom to move where that goes. Now you could try floating and some things like that. There's probably a number of different ways you could code this, but the way we kind of worked it out on this site was we just gave it a position of absolute and then we gave it a margin left of negative, let's try like 30. Yeah, 30 looks pretty good. Maybe a little more, maybe like 35. Give it some room to breathe. And then uh, it left looks actually pretty good there, but if we wanted to uh, kind of move it up towards the title, we could do a margin top. And remember with margins, for those of you who've been through my CS course, you know this, you can give this margins negative space. Let's try maybe negative 10. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Maybe not right on, so let's try like negative seven. How about negative eight? 
Yeah, negative eight looks good. Let's give that a whirl. All right, so we've got our code right there. It's that easy. You just saw with just a handful of CSS, basically what we did here was we targeted the category. So any post with the category of video is going to be category video, and it does have to be lowercase. Um, one thing I wanted to point out really quick is if we go into the posts and we look at categories, for example, you're going to identify it by the slug, and the slug is always going to be lowercase. It basically looks like a URL. So anytime you add a category, you wanna make sure you have the lowercase here. So that's looking really good, right? Let's do one more and let's copy this and let's add the PDF. So if I copy that, nothing's gonna happen. But remember, if we look at our slugs, the other one was just the slug of PDF. So watch this. Uh, first things first, let me find the code for PDF that we were using. Oh, it's actually right here. So 059. So let's remember that, 059, 059. So instead of 4E, it was 059. And then what we need to do is we need to change the category. So check this out. If I change this to PDF, that should change. Wow, super cool, super easy, right? Just targeting those categories with CSS, adding the font family, adding the actual icon, adjusting it like so, and we are good to go. So that's it, guys. The only other thing you would probably wanna do at this point is if you get a little more intricate with how you style these, you will need to maybe potentially add some media queries. In this case, it should look fine. Let's double check that. Let's go ahead and inspect. Let's take a look at mobile and fingers crossed. Oh, that looks just perfect. And look at what a difference that makes, you know, because again, you probably won't do this with posts that have featured images, but if you have posts like this that are just very boring. Like I've got several sites where my clients are blogging and they never use featured images. They just blog and it's, oh, it's so boring. But if you can really accent the categories, it's a really great way to add some spice to your site and make your clients go, ooh, that's cool. So really, really cool. So in a sense, all you need to do is add a new category and adjust the content. So for example, let's just add a third category just for the heck of it, just in case you're like, I'd like to see this you know, from the start. Let's add a third category real quick. I don't mean to make this tutorial drag on because it is completed now, but just in case you wanted to maybe do three categories instead of two, let me just walk you through exactly how you'll do that. Let's add a new category and we'll call this, uh, let's just, I don't know, call it text for now. So that looks good. So post number three is gonna be text. So let's go back out to the site and you're gonna see no icon there because, oh. Oops, it was video. I added video as well. We need to make sure we take video off. So this just needs to be text. So this, you probably want to be wary. That's actually a, a good thing to point out. Um, if you're doing this, it can only be one category unless you're, you're potentially going to overwrite some things. So you want to be a little careful of that. So in this case, this post number three is just going to be text. So there's going to be no icon here. And oh, actually. One more thing, I need to go into the blog module and tell this to pull open that category as well. So if you're new to Divi, you can go into a blog module and you can say, hey, what categories do you wanna display? And I wanna display anything that's PDF, text, or video. Cool, 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 all right, let's bust this out. And you guessed it, all we're gonna do is replicate that code and we're gonna change it to text and pull a different icon in there. So let's go right into our theme customizer. And let's figure out which one we wanna use. We'll use this one right here, how about that? That's O5A. So let's go down here. Let's just copy one of these categories, paste it, category is gonna be text. What was it, O5A? And there we go, that easy guys. So if you have like five or six different categories, all you have to do is take this code, which is provided for you below, drop it in your style sheet, change it accordingly. And you can style this from here. You could make the font size bigger. You could add a background to it if you wanted to, for example, let's do like background. Um, you could say black, for example. Uh, might wanna do some padding, maybe like eight pixels. Then we'd have to adjust the margin and stuff, but you can do some really cool things with CSS to make your icons pop. So. There you go, guys. This code is available for you. Again, 
you'll see how powerful knowing CSS is for Divi or any website you're building. So make sure you check out my course with the promo code below to get access to that. I will guide you on how to do stuff like this so you can start customizing sites like a boss. Hopefully this has helped. Check out the post below with the code and you guys are ready to rock. All right, see you on the next tutorial. <laughs>